Hey everyone, so just a quick side note before we get into this episode. This was actually recorded a few days before we um, have decided to change the gym's name. Though referred to as CrossFit Grovedale 2.0 in this episode, with all of these current transitions we are about to take, what better time than now to switch up the name as well? We are now known as CFGD Fitness or Customized Programming Group Dynamic Fitness out of Grovedale. It's definitely a mouthful, but it aligns perfectly with Aaron's vision of the gym. So other than just keeping that in mind as you listen to our chat, sit back and enjoy the podcast. I'm a lot more clear of my own core values, my own personal belief systems, and I'm, I'm quite aware of where my passion is and what my mission is and um, now that we have those it made sense to to change what the gym was doing over the course of a decade in the military i got to see some ordinary people do some truly extraordinary things i started to believe that we're all capable of so much more than we could ever imagine now i'm on a mission to unleash human potential whether that's through exercise nutrition lifestyle or vacation it all starts with mindset Strive for greatness, despise mediocrity, and accept nothing but the best that you can do. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our Unleashing Potential podcast. It is hosted by me, Molly Flynn. I'm over here in the United States, and we've got CrossFit Grovedale owner Aaron Summers down under in Grovedale, Australia. How's it going over there today? What what week are you oh. guys on in in isolation? <laughs> Twelve maybe. Twelve or eleven. Does it feel like it? Eleven. <laughs> We're at the end of week eleven. And you guys yeah. just recently received a date, right? For right now, a potential date for reopening. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So if everything goes according to plan, we'll be fully open again. Um on the 22nd of June. So about, what's that, 17 days or something? Yep. Are you ready? Are you ready for that reopening? We will be, for sure. We'll be ready. we still got some work to do behind the scenes and um, cleaning up, but we will be ready. And you guys have been doing outdoor boot camps as well, which the members seem to have been enjoying. Yep. Yeah, running small, small outdoor classes when the weather's been good. A light at the end of the tunnel, for sure. So today we are diving into, so I'm just going to kind of get in the technical side of it and then, and then we'll break it down. So we've got a new thing called CrossFit Grove Deal 2.0. We'll figure out what that means by Aaron shortly. Um, and we're basically just going to dive into the future of the gym, new programming structure of class, all, all the goods in between. And this is actually something similar. Um, we briefly touched up on it in our second podcast when we talked about the future of customizing programs. So just a quick yes or no, do you still believe customized programming is the future of CrossFit? Yeah, more so. Perfect. So we know where this conversation is going. (laughs) So before we get into the details behind um, it all on the touching points, let's just give a general overview of basically what I'm sure most people are wondering, especially current members, what is CrossFit Grove Deal 2, 2.0 and why now? Yes, we'll, I guess start with the why now. That's the easy part. Um, the, the why now is basically any organization when we, when we talk about trying to, um, to change culture. It's a slow process, almost like the analogy of turning around a cruise ship. Um, in this current situation that we've been thrown into, um, actually opens up some opportunities. And one of those opportunities is we can we can open like a brand new gym and build culture from the ground up and start from zero with the right principles at hand, the right core values and build our culture out as a result. Um, So if there is a huge positive to come out of the last 12 weeks, it is that we can start again on culture and grow from the um, grow from there out. Is this something that you've always wanted to do or was it just kind of like this crazy gap happened where you had to close for a little bit and you kind of just saw an opportunity, juices started flowing and you were like, I just want to create a whole new vibe. Yeah, it was probably more the latter. So 
Um, the, I guess I wasn't 100% aligned on my own core values originally um, and tried to, tried to answer those or dig into what those were and then um, almost let the, the current um, gym or model dictate those core values. Over this last period, of, um, it's been a time that I could actually reflect, figure out what it is I'm actually passionate about and, um, and what my core values are. And then we can um, have a gym that aligns with those values. Once those two are in a line, we're going to be able to create an awesome environment and culture um, that really kind of, that breeds, that breeds an opportunity for growth for everybody. Um, without those two aligned, then it really, it makes any, any kind of um, decision making or um, process building a tough decision to make. So now I'm a lot more clear of my own core values, my own personal belief systems. And I'm, I'm, quite aware of where my passion is and what my mission is and um now that we have those it made sense to to change what the gym was doing you went into the why so why crossfit to grovedale 2.0 now what is it what's it going to look like what does it mean mm -hmm. so it'll be vastly different and I, i'm not sure that it's just i mean we got the platform here to use the gym as um, an example but I mean, I think that the principles can relate to anybody that's not even a member here or doesn't even do CrossFit. The same principles can align that once you have your core values and once you have your mission, you can derive your core values. And then once you have the two, you can build culture in anything. And, um, and I, if, we, if we start back with the, with the mission and the mission now is, is to unleash human potential. We want to get and extract the absolute most out of every person that's a member of this gym. They don't have to be a good CrossFitter by any means. We just want to get the most out of them in their entire um, life. So not just the one hour they're here at the gym. We want to be able to help them on the path to understanding what they're capable of inside the gym, outside the gym, at home, at work, and, um, and, and just across the board. So that's where it all starts with the mission to, um, to unleash human potential. And then with that in mind, we, we questioned, all right, so how – can we deliver that? How can we do that the best way possible? Um, and we started experimenting with some um, customized programming. We haven't gone into it nearly as deep as we will um, over this last 12 weeks, but we have decided as a team that this is, um, this is the way moving forward. And we'll stick with the customized programming for all of our members and for anyone that joins up in the future. So quite a radical move in terms of CrossFit um, but not a radical move in terms of the way the fitness industry is starting to head. Um, the having your own goal driven programming makes a lot more sense to me. Um, and to most people in that kind of progressive state of fitness rather than everybody doing the exactly the same thing every single time. So in hindsight, CrossFit Grovedale June 22nd will be fully customized programming workouts. Correct. Correct. Um, as we say it, it sounds like it's going to be very individualized and maybe potentially lose some community value, but it won't. No, we'll talk about why shortly. Um, but I think an easy analogy, an easy way to think about this is if I like to use examples that make people that, that seem so stupid that it makes, it makes it quite obvious. So if somebody was to ask you and I, um, like what our goals are. And I said, my goal is, to put on 12 kilograms of body weight uh, of, of lean muscle, let's say, and your goal was to maintain exactly where you're at. And then if we were to turn around to that person and say, Oh yeah, we have the exact same nutrition plan, including calories and including the types of food we're eating, they would laugh at us. That's absolutely ridiculous. Like why would somebody with my goals, my body shape, my um, like whatever training regularity or whatever, why would I have the same nutrition plan as somebody with a completely different goal and a completely different body type and completely different um, position in life. So you almost laugh at that. It's so ridiculous. So why do we just if take... No one, if, no, if no one knows what we look like, just paint the picture that I'm more muscular. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's my goal to, to catch up. <laughs> okay, so someone come... So the idea is that everyone coming in, the point is, is that you're not just coming in to get the 60 minutes and to kind of like what people would say escape reality anymore, right? Like everyone needs to come in and they need to come in with a goal. Correct. So it's goal driven now. So without, 
an understanding of what your goals are, then this the system will collapse. So there is going to be a huge impact, a uh, huge importance placed on that deriving what your goal is, sitting down with a coach to help figure that out. Um, that's why we're here. It's going to be hard for some people to, to understand or identify what their goal is, but that's what we're here to help people do. And we won't be able to be begin until you've defined what that, what that goal looks like. So the way I like to think about it and something that you'll hear often coming into the gym is that we will first have a purpose, then train with purpose so that we can live with purpose. One leads to the other. We can't live with purpose if we don't have a purpose. So we'll have a purpose. That will be our goal. And we'll train with purpose. So we'll set our training based on that goal. And then hopefully we can live with purpose, meaning what we're taking here isn't just 60 minutes of your day anymore. This is helping us become better across the board. And we can take that 60 minutes into the rest of our life. So it's not really about being a gym that's on that 60 minute, right? Cause so that's how basically how long a class would be. It's not really about being that gym that people just look for, for 60 minutes of their day. You want to, you want to create and shape them. So that they're at home thinking about the things that you're giving them that will progress them towards their goals that they're making. Exactly. Exactly. And there is a very fine line between we want to be a, we want to be a center of greatness. Um, or at least striving for greatness, but that is not the same as being a great CrossFitter. So we need to get that out of our mind. I'm not, we're not looking for people to be awesome at CrossFit by any means. That's not the expectation. We just want people to search for growth. And that's, there's two different things and there can be a bit of a blurred line there, but understanding the difference is, is gonna be quite important. We want to be a center for performance, but not necessarily, you do not have to be a good CrossFitter for that to be the case. And I think that's something that aligns with this and it's on, it's used in, in the like nutrition conversation a lot, right? It's not about the 60 minutes you put into the gym. It's about, it's about the other 23 hours every day. But I think a also wicked important thing is to understand that that's not just with nutrition. That is literally with everything that is with your, what are you physically doing outside of the gym? How are you thinking? And then along with nutrition. So it's about, it's about understanding that 60 minutes is such a small part part of your day and what your goal now is to shape the 24 hours in someone else's day, not just that one hour. Right. Right. And, and you touch on the nutrition is, is a good example too, because if we think it's hard to answer any question without having that goal in the first place. So let's look at, let's look at a few of the branches of what we, what we've been discussing a little lately at the gym. Um, Let's look at exercise first. How do we know how we're supposed to structure our exercise if we don't know what our goal is? Somebody who's trying to make the CrossFit Games should not be training in the same way as somebody who's trying to lose um, 10 kilograms of body fat because um, they're pre-diabetic. Likewise, how do we even answer the nutrition question if we don't understand our goal? Because nutrition does not look the same for everyone. Like the example I used earlier, if I'm trying to add 12 kilograms of lean muscle, my nutrition is going to look a hell of a lot different than somebody who's trying to lose the 10 kilograms, like I just mentioned then. It's hard to even understand the intensity of our training without understanding our goal. So somebody that's looking to improve purely their Olympic lifting might not be benefited from doing 100% intensity workouts when it comes to the Metcon side of things. They might get more out of dialing down the intensity a little bit so that the next day they come into the gym, they're still fresh, their muscles haven't broken down to the point where they're unable to lift because lifting is their goal. So it's hard. We can't really define anything until we understand what we're even aiming for. And then that, that, bran that branches into the other elements of um, mindset and, and how much sleep and recovery we should be getting. Like these questions that we need to be asking cannot be answered until we understand what that, that goal is at the end. And even though it's been used a few times, like um, that you said a few times, a goal of like losing a certain amount of weight or et cetera, like that's not like as much as that's an, an option, that's not what we, what you would be expecting everyone to come in and like looking for a certain type of weight or body fat or et cetera. Like a goal can be to get a pull up, right? A, bull, yeah. a goal can be to run a certain distance in, in a certain amount of time. It can be fitness related, obviously mindset related because that's, your expertise right there, nutrition related. There's so many avenues you can take with different goals. And then your goals might be a monthly. It might be a long year goal. Everyone's going to kind of attack it differently, which is fine. Exactly. And we try to, we will try to um, direct the members towards identifying a longer term goal 
Um, and then we'll use that long-term goal to then break it down into small chunks that we can measure monthly. So if somebody's goal is to do a pull up, then we will ask them like, what, how, um, you know, if, at, if this actually happens, what would change for you in your life and what would improve for you in your life? And if that's hard to answer, then we might look for something a little deeper. But if somebody says, well, if I can do a pull up, I'm going to feel a lot better about myself because it is a good display of functional power to, to body weight ratio. That would then indicate that I'm, um, I'm, I'm strong enough on my body weight kind of thing. And we'll dig in to try to get that a little bit deeper, but um, we, the idea of having a long-term goal and that's, and this is where the coaches are going to help you out. Um, this is what we do. And this is our, our role and our job. Um, is to is to figure out what the long term end state looks like, and then how we can break that down into small measurable pieces. And then once we hit them, what we ask what's next. I think that um, it's now is an important time to dive a little bit uh, deeper, more into the specifics of the the, the new programming, what the classes are going to look like, because especially for those listening who kind of have that fear of thinking like. There might be a class of 10, but someone might be running on a 1K and someone might be doing 10 snatches. So mm-hmm. kind of giving them the idea of even though it's customized programming, how is there, how are the classes still going to still gonna work and how are we still going to kind of create that quote unquote CrossFit competition vibe, I guess. That's, that's what we all joined up for, right? <laughs> so I, I think um, like at the crux of all that, we, we need to first understand that Personal training is kind of the gold standard of reaching goals. However, group training is the gold standard almost for motivation and accountability. So we don't want to take one away um, at the expense of the other or gain one at the expense of the other um, more correctly. So we don't want to lose that community feel. So we've come up with what we believe is the best way to deliver both. um, And that is to customize the, the workout of the day so that it suits your goals. So we're not going to individualize. We're not going to, um, personalized workouts we're just going to slightly tweak them uh sorry just maybe explain briefly what what the difference is so what's the difference between like people getting a personalized work i understand it's like but maybe layman turns like what's the difference between like if you're giving personalized workouts to as to what you're talking about with customized workouts so personalized workouts personalized effectively you're just going to train one-on-one with the coach um, so it's just you and the coach. The coach is going to tell you exactly what to do they're going to be standing there exactly at that moment and they're going to be saying higher intensity, lower intensity. I need you to move like this. I need you to put your arm here. I need this to happen. Um, Awesome benefits in terms of producing results, not hugely beneficial in terms of giving people the tools to then be able to do it themselves because they end up, it ends up being almost a crutch where they rely on that trainer to tell them exactly what to do. Customize. We will um, communicate what we want you to do and what we're looking for and how it should feel. And that way you will let your body kind of learn and understand and, um, you're, you're given more tools rather than just being told exactly what to do. From a sense of a class, it's probably easiest if we explain it in the eyes of an athlete, what their day will look like. So let's call it Monday morning. Monday morning's class, um, the general programming might call for three rounds of 10 push-ups, a 400 meter run and 10 box jumps. Let's call it that. If somebody has come to us and they said, their main goal right now is to lose 10 kilograms of body fat because they're pre-diabetic and for health reasons, um, they want to do that. Then the night before they would receive a video from us. They'll receive their, their customized version of that workout, which will still be three rounds. We're still looking for about the same time domain so that we still get that community feel where everyone's training together and everyone's finishing around the same time. But rather than the push ups. In this instance, we might be able to put in something that's going to help actually um, maybe burn calories at a higher rate or something like that. So something a little bit more metabolic. We might change the push-ups into burpees, a little bit higher metabolic rate, um, something like that. It's going to just change the energy systems that we use a bit and then hopefully um, burn fat at a little higher rate. So it's just a personalized spin on the same kind of workout, meaning that it's more directed towards your goals, but it's still done in a group environment. We're still training together and we're still going to all basically train next to each other and with each other and finish it around the same time. If we have a skill or a strength element prior to that, um, that would be goal driven as well. So almost like we asked just a minute ago from a, from a, how will this roll out from a coaching perspective? If one person's goal is to improve their Olympic lifting, 
and we have 15 minutes assigned before a Metcon part of a class to um, allocate to skill work, then we might have one person, like we said, whose goal is Olympic lifting. They might be doing um, some cleans at a lightweight to work on technique. Somebody else who's looking to lose um, some excess body fat might be told to be on the um, assault bike for intervals for 15 minutes. Um, another person might be looking to improve mobility and be doing some, um, some kind of lifting, but also some mobility work in between. So everybody's going to look a little different. And this is where it really gets exciting because now every person that comes in every single day is going to receive one-on-one -on -one direct contact with the coach and they're going to walk away better than they were when they came in. They're going to have a new skill or a new understanding or in some element, they're going to receive one-on-one -on -one contact points every single time they come into the gym now. So the coach will get around to the group and say, all right, we're going to start off. We've got 15 minutes here. Um, we're looking for X, Y, and Z. And he'll walk around to every single, or she will walk around to every single person in the class. All right, what has your coach got you working on today in this school session? So every person is going to get some kind of one-on-one -on -one contact point with the coach. And it's going to really up the level of the coaching that we, um, that we display at our gym as a result. And that's what I was just thinking. And when you were explaining this in hindsight, like what's happening is like, you're taking away coaches having to, at the beginning of every class or before each wad, like having to go over like pretty much every scale modification or injury changes that can be done within a workout because each athlete is coming in already know already knowing what they need to do so like coaches won't have to go over those but then like you said it's still going to challenge coaches and still have having to keep them on their toes and up to date with their knowledge because there's going to be a full variety of athletes coming in with all with all different angles and all different like um, ways they're supposed to attack the workout today so you have to be still as that one coach of the class understand each each athlete's individual assignment as well absolutely so there's no hiding anymore as a coach you won't be um there's no wad management we're not just coming in to say three two one go and press the clock it is we are now coaching every single time we step in here um and hence we'll keep our classes capped at 10 because we want to provide quality and and our entire business model now hinges on our ability to provide the best quality coaching that we can and this comes back to the reason that we wanted to do it this way. Um, no longer are we going to be the place where we come to just be mediocre and do the bare minimum and not, you know, just to spend and to, to check the box is what we're, look, we, what we're looking to ignore or looking to avoid. Or I don't want people that are coming to the gym just to check the box that they came to a gym. If they're coming to our gym, they're coming because they want to be better across their whole lifespan. They want to improve all elements of their life not just check a box to say today I trained for 60 minutes. There are places you can do that. There are lots of places you can do that. But if you're going to spend the best part of $200 a month, you might want to do it somewhere cheaper if that's all you're looking to do. I think the people that come to us come to us for a reason. And, um, and that reason is because they aspire to be either like somebody else there or they aspire to have those attributes that a lot of um, people that train with purpose then live with purpose and they aspire to be that in some way. So I think whether it's consciously or subconsciously, there's a reason that people come to places like this. And if you were to dig down, it's not to come here and receive mediocre coaching or mediocre effort. You're paying good money to be at a gym like this. I think there's a reason you chose that. If you wanted to just be around your friends, you would join a book club. It's that simple. People pay big money to be at gyms like this because they expect to then be able to get to a position that helps them grow. I, something interesting that um, is in a, in a way you could argue that it's not like this is a fully new concept um, that you have been trying to bring into CrossFit Grovedale. I don't know how long it's been. Let's just say six months. You started to every single workout in CrossFit Grovedale. There was always a stimulus, right? There was always like a, a fitness stimulus. And then you were throwing in mental, like a mental goal slash stimulus as well. And that what was happening was getting lost in translation was it was just thrown in there and people didn't understand how to adjust the workout to hit the stimulus. It was more so still that um, mind, like mind thoughts of chasing the RX, like we say, and like you hear a lot and look, there's nothing wrong with 
chasing the RX some days, I totally get it, but there's a stimulus there for a reason. So if you're chasing the RX, but you're taking 20 minutes to do a workout that says this should be finished within five to seven minutes, you are completely missing the point of that workout and you are not growing in the way that that workout was supposed to make you grow. So this customized programming is just now nailing that in so that that won't happen and that everyone hit the intended stimulus in the way that they're supposed to. Yep. And I think that's exactly right. And, and the reason we have a stimulus is because workouts are designed to elicit a body response. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're so driving of the point that if this weight is designed to be moderate to light for you, don't go heavy because then you're going to tap into the wrong energy system. You're going to change the workout stimulus to something that's now a weightlifting workout instead of a high um, metabolic workout. And by doing that, you're missing the programming and then you're not going to get the results that we're looking for. Having a goal, this, this reinforces what we're talking about. Having a goal then dictates a stimulus. And this is something I didn't, hint, uh, didn't get it to before, but it's not just about changing the movements in a workout. It's that we're going to individually and, cuss and individually um, send each person a little video every night before the workout that says, this is how I want you to approach the workout to get this stimulus. And that's going to change for everybody. Do you think, and I mean, obviously one thing at a time, um, <laughs> Do you foresee at all CrossFit Groveville offering, like due to this new format, offering um, shorter classes? Um, yeah, I think, I don't know if, if we'll necessarily call them shorter classes, but we're already um, telling the guys that are coming in that we can expect the, the classes to be around 45, 50 minutes with then time to work some accessory stuff if you have the time. If they can hang around and do that, then we'll have that option. We'll also run some Ron Wads and... Um, mobility work at the back end of every class um, so that people can really work on that stuff if they've got the time to hang around. Would you argue that that's what CrossFitters avoid the most? So everyone's going to cut away early. I wouldn't argue that. (laughs) No, but I think it's a cultural thing. Once we build that culture of people that are looking to be hungry for more as a result of the, the the culture that's going to come from the staff down, um, we'll start to see a group of people that want, to be the best that they can be. And I think then that breeds an environment where people are going to do the extra work because it's all going to start to feed that one system. Um, I believe, cause we have chatted about this a few times before you have mentioned um, you're still going to have certain days that are kind of dedicated to a throwdown type style or maybe talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. So we understand and, and personally, we both understand it, but we understand that one of the, the, the attractions of CrossFit and the draw card is that we, that we measure everything and we record everything, um, measurable, repeatable, so that that inspires us and, and, and then kind of pushes us to want to be better. So we're going to keep that element, but we're just not going to come in every single day and try and compete. The idea of competing every day we talked about in the second podcast is, is outrageous. There's no sport in the world that does that. But we still want to compete enough to keep that motivation up. So we think something like a throwdown Thursday where every single person will be given the actual programmed workout with an RX. So that way the competitive guys that really want to see how they stack up against others, because call it what we will. Um, people will say they like it because it self motivates, but that's not true. If that were true, then they would be happy never doing a throwdown Thursday. They want to see how they stack up against the other members of the gym. That's just the fact. So for those people, we'll have a throwdown Thursday where everybody does the same workout. There is an RX um, that's put on the board and you'll get to see how you stack up against the other members. I think that also promotes an environment where people understand, all right, I only need to perform once a week. I can use the other five or six days to improve for that one day rather than coming in and competing every single day because we're chasing an RX on the whiteboard, which then leads to a deterioration of performance for a lot of our guys rather than an improvement. So knowing that only one day is going to be the one that, that, that really, you know, counts from that perspective, I think will then again, breed an environment where people work harder on the improvement side of things. So the training side rather than the competing side. So what about the people who maybe feel like they are unable to really define a specific goal? Maybe they don't are unsure if they really have a specific goal or what if there's someone who, you know, this gin time is, is their mental health, um, is there for their mental health. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's something we hear a lot of, um, at that, 
members are coming in um, and their main goal is, is this provides a mental health. So then that's, that it's no different there. Their goal will then be to, to improve their mental health. And we'll, but we'll look at, we'll look at how we can measure that. Um, what does that look like? What does an improved state of mental health look like for you? Let's talk about it. We'll dig in a little bit deeper and then we'll say, all right, how can we look at ways to define that? And what, what is mental health? Um, and I've been talking about mental health is effectively the balance of the other elements of our life. So our connections with other humans and the earth and um, our, our recovery levels, the stress levels that go in with that, how much we're exercising and how well we're eating. I think we can start to use the exercise element of that to improve mental health. We can get them on a cleaner eating habits. We can get them looking at ways that they can uh, improve their connections in their life as well. So having, I just come in because it provides mental health. That is a goal in and of itself. We're just going to look to make that a little bit more measurable. Um, and that's what the coaches are there for. Others, we hear a lot um, people that just say, I just don't have a goal. I just want to come in. Well, that's what we call checking the box. And like we said, that doesn't really fit in with now our vision or our mission of the gym. So we're going to, we're going to dig deeper. We're going to get real. We're going to make you answer. Like, what are you doing this for? And I think even if people don't consciously or aren't consciously aware of the fact, I think subconsciously they have a goal. Like I said, if you wanted to just check something off the box, you would, you wouldn't come into a place that makes you do Fran. It's not fun. That shit hurts. So they would go somewhere that was easy. If it was just about checking a box, you would go somewhere that was cheap, somewhere that was easy and somewhere where the coaches didn't make an effort. So you could just hide in the shadows, check your box, go home. And I know of cases of people that do that. Um, and that's fine. If that's what you're looking for, that's, that's what you're looking for. If you're coming to this gym, you're coming here because you want to become better. And that's what we're, that's what we're going to then provide that opportunity, the environment for you to grow. Push back. Are you, are you expecting it? Are you fearing it? <laughs> Do you know it's coming? <laughs> um, I'm expecting some pushback. Um, but really, if you can listen to this podcast and understand how passionate we are about this idea and why it's so beneficial, that makes no sense to push back on this. Um, you will become whatever your goal is, unless your goal is to become a worse person and, and a worse athlete and a more broken one, then this is going to work. It's going to be for you. If you have any plans to grow positively, then this will work. So it doesn't make sense that there'll be pushback, but I do believe there will be some because we're humans. We're, we're very resistant of change and this will be a radical change. Only radical in terms of CrossFit, not radical in terms of like, if you look at OPEX, they do a similar thing. If you look at Marcus Philly, who does a similar thing. These aren't new concepts, like we said. They're new to CrossFit. Um, so yeah, there might be pushback. But I think in time, when people give it a go, let it play out for a little while, they're going to love this system, realize they're achieving a hell of a lot more, still got the opportunity to throw down. I also want to bring in a monthly Saturday competition where we just do like two back-to-back -back workouts. The points will tally up over a six-month season and then somebody's awarded a, a win at the end. We have RX and scale division. So almost a little in-house competition that runs for a season, gives us something to compete, something to train for if we can't, if we can't really get a goal. Um, and that gives us something to aim for. And that way, I think once we're bought into that idea of I'm here to improve, not here to win, um, then we, we start to see that it's, it's the process that makes us better, not the end result. That sounds like fun, right? It, I think we spoke about this the other day and you gave a great analogy that I'll butcher, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it, but it's not about seven days a week or however often you train five, six days a week. Every day is not meant to be a competition that is like you take pro athletes, for example, they, every time they are going to football, it's not a game. They're going to practices. They're doing scrimmages. Like every single day is not meant to be a competition. You're going to burn yourself out. That's where injuries come in. And that's where mobility issues come in because we're not working on stuff. We're just always trying to compete, compete and not sure. take that back. And, it, and it's hard with today's society and technology we just see the highlights and we think that every time they're going particularly crossfit is probably the worst example all we ever see is the competition and, and the cool stuff on their instagrams or on documentaries and things like that but we're just not seeing the amount of work that's going in behind to make them better at what they do we even had that recent 10 part series on michael jordan and there's still the same thing it's like he was out there just competing like a fierce demon every single time but that's not true that's game day once a week 
the stuff that he would do behind the scenes, we can't even get our head around how much work that guy did and how many extra shots he was taking to get better so that when it came time to compete, he was, he was always at 100%. The work he was doing in the gym is some of the most underrated work um, probably in the history of sport where no basketballer was in the gym. He, he began the strength building stuff and all the behind scenes stuff that we don't ever see really any footage of. He was doing that probably ahead of his time and um, as a result became who he was. Now we see a documentary like that and say, well, he just competed 100% of the time. Well, that's what makes good footage, but that's, mm-hmm. not, what, that's not the truth behind it. Yeah. And I think for people who are, st- who are still listening in on this, um, just to give people a little bit of insight, because of the experience that we've had at Grovedale these past some odd weeks, months with the at-home customizable programming, it helped me test out in the bit in the sense of, so my 61 year old dad just recently started doing CrossFit and with me. So just me and him, but I was taking the workouts that we were getting and I was doing exactly what we were talking about that we are talking about now. So I would attack the workout a certain way and my dad would attack the workout sometimes similar, sometimes doing completely different stuff. And guess what? My 61 year old dad, who's new to CrossFit was still giving me a run for my money and still talking shit to me, <laughs> even though we were doing like different workouts, but it's still, you still have that, mo- that motivation and just knowing the accuracy of it because of like all the tweaking that we were doing every single time, no matter what he was doing, what I was doing, the stimulus was being hit every single time by both of us, knowing that the adjustments we made were perfect, but that, that competition feeling is still there. As much people think that that might not be, it is. And, and I promise it will be experienced. I, my- I think oh, exactly what you're saying, I think is exactly right. Even more so, I think there should be more competition there should be more competition in this context because everybody will be lifting a weight based off their stimulus. Mm -hmm. So it's not everybody lift 60 kilos. It's everybody lift a weight that's moderately heavy for you that you can do 10 reps, but not 15 and eight is too light. So if everybody selects that weight correctly based off their stimulus, then everybody is working almost at the same rate. So I think it should actually feed that more um, than, than take away which is another one of the, 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 the positives and primary um, takeaways from the, the whole concept. Um, Saturdays will still be partner workouts every time. We'll have a competitor programming workout prior to the partner workout going down so that those people that really, really want a big push in their programming can come into an hour of competitive programming and then jump into the partner workout and get a two hour workout in that way. We'll have two barbell clubs a week because we really want to promote the improvement of skills. Um, particularly in the Olympic lifting. And then we'll look to bring in one competition day per month so that we can run a six monthly competition and therefore give some people the ability to, um, to base their goal around that. CrossFit Grovedale 2.0 sounds like it's going to be a new world. It will be different. It'll be radical in the CrossFit realm, not so radical in fitness realm. (laughs) 